Three, two, and one. We're talking uh, Niner football in the Niner locker room with Curtis Robinson, former Stanford linebacker now with the Niners. How's your season going so far? It's going well. I'm enjoying it. You know, the team's doing really well. Um, I'm enjoying it. Second year has definitely been better than rookie year. You know, I've learned a lot more this past offseason. And uh, like I told you before, just being able to learn under Fred and Dre and Aziz and everybody in the room, it's been really good. Yeah. These guys all, I mean, Fred's playing at a high level, but, man, Greenlaw is crazy good. Yeah. Aziz flies around and detonates yeah. on people. Right. I mean, it's amazing watching this group. Yep. Every single one of these guys could make the Pro Bowl. Um, what's it like? First of all, why did you come here? Because a lot of people would say, man, there'd be maybe be better opportunity elsewhere. Right. But give me your philosophy on, on your career and why you wound up here. Um, you know, I saw it as a good opportunity to learn and develop. Honestly, I feel like this is a special place that's different than a lot of other organizations and a lot of other teams to where we have a loaded room. Right now, I'm, I'm really having to, you know, work to develop and hone on my craft and stuff like that. And I have a lot of good guys in front of me that are, you know, showing me the way, which is good. And I thought that would be good for me. And also, just being back in the Bay yeah. doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. I was excited to be able to do that after college. Better weather here than anywhere. Um, I was saying before we started the interview that, you know, it's like you can see the confidence that I think the linebacking core gives the rest of this team. There's right. a real swagger. Right. There's a lot of bounce. Um, Talk. You're in that room with those guys. Yeah. What's it like being in that room? I mean, and is there a leader in the room, or is it just kind of just a bunch of? I mean, that's a bunch just, of alphas. Yeah, I mean, that's just. I would say it's a bunch of alphas for sure. You know, everyone brings different stuff to the table, and I think everyone leads in their own way. You know, I think everyone works so hard and and is so diligent with their process that everyone leads by example. You know, obviously Fred is a more vocal leader, um, especially not just for the linebacker room but for the team. But everyone leads in their own way. You know, everyone sets a really good example from Fred top down to the bottom. Um, Everyone just works, and I think that's where the swagger and the confidence comes from. You know, when you work like that, it's, it's easy to be confident come Sunday. Now, you're making your, making your name on special teams. Um, how, do you, how do you feel you get any opportunity? you think you get an opportunity at any point to play from scrimmage? Uh, how do you feel? Where, what linebacker spot do you feel most comfortable playing? Um, I feel comfortable anywhere. You know, wherever I, I get put in, I think I'm comfortable. I've been able to develop, you know, throughout camp, throughout the season, just learning behind everybody. So with that, I'm more so just kind of stand prepared for the opportunity whenever it does come. You know, I'm excited for it, and if it does, I'm doing what I can to stay prepared and be ready. Yeah, special teams a big part of the game. Jordan Willis had that huge play last year in the yep. playoffs. Do you, when you're thinking about that, do you, is that the dream? Like, you make a huge play in the playoffs and send this team to a championship? Always. Anything I can do to help the team, is if it's a big play, then that's even, you know, cherry on top. But whatever I can do, whether it's special teams or defense, to help the team win, get to that uh, that end goal at the end of the season, is I'm excited to do, for sure. Talk to us a little bit about D'Amico's defense. You guys are attacking. You yep. forced two fumbles last week against Kamara. Yep. It's a, it's a gang, menta, gang, you know, gang to the ball kind of a mentality, right? right? And, and guys are and guys are punching out the ball yeah. when they're when one guy's making the tackle, another guy's coming for the ball. Right. Talk to us about what's being emphasized. Yeah, I mean, he preaches swarm. That's the mentality for you. Say gang mentality. It's more really of a swarm mentality. You see almost 11 guys in every clip at the end of the at the end of the play where the ball's at. You most likely see 11 49ers players around that ball, and that's just how we play. That's how everyone's mindset is. And it's like you said, you, you get to that ball, it's not just good enough to get to the ball, it's taking it away every time or at least doing what we can to. So I love it, it's run and hit, everyone plays fast, plays confident, plays free, and I, I think it's awesome. I'm, yeah. I'm enjoying it for sure. Um, on, a, on kind of a down note, Coach Shaw is, is walking away from Stanford. Yep. Uh, he's the winningest coach in the, in the history of the program. He's yep. got my respect, I'm sure he has yours. Of course. Um, why do you think things have tumbled out of control for Stanford? Not out of control, but they're to the point where they need to make a change. I mean, David hasn't forgotten how to coach, but yeah. there's obviously a number of dynamics that go into making any program successful. Yeah. You've been watching it from afar, and you were part of the program. Right. What do you think's happened there? You know, because they went from where Harbaugh was, and then Dave took it over and right. kept it rolling. In the last couple of years, there's been a little bit of fall off, especially on the athletes that they're getting, it seems like, up front. What, but what do you see? Um, you know, it, it's hard to know. For these last couple of years, I haven't been there. So there's yeah. uh, there's obviously a lot of stuff that goes on uh, behind the scenes that, you know, I really don't have the access to anymore. Yeah. But um, college football has changed a lot, in my opinion. Um, I don't know if I can speak specifically on Stanford and how it's changed over the last couple of years since I left. But college football is just different. You know, the recruiting scape is different with NIL and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm sure that has a bit of an effect on it. Um, but, you know, I think, I think Coach Shaw stepping down, um, I'm proud of him. I'm, I'm proud to have played for him. For sure, you know, he had a great career, and I, I don't think it has anything to do with him. You know, if you're talking about the, the downfall, I don't think it's necessarily downfall. I think there's been a couple off years, but I think there's a lot of guys that are high-character guys in that locker room and in that staff upstairs that 
understand what it's going to take. They've been there before, you know. There was there was off years with Harbaugh as well before everything got rolling. So I think eventually they'll get it back on track. With whoever, whoever the replacement is, I think they're going to do a really good job finding a good one that's going to match the, the character and the quality of Shaw. Um, and hopefully they can get it turned around. Hey, a couple last ones before we let you go. You guys got practice starting yep. up. World Cup, you following it at all? Not really. I see a lot of people magically becoming soccer fans for right, the World right, Cup. Right. Obviously, I always root for Team USA yeah. uh, when they're playing. It was cool to see uh, Pulisic laying it out for his team in his country, but uh, no, nah, I haven't been following it too much. I'll be following the round of 16 more now that it's getting competitive. There you go. Is it, is it soccer or is it football? Oh, uh, it's football. It's not soccer. Okay. You know, I'm, not, I'm not big on the... That, that's what we call it over here, but it's right. football. Okay. And last one. Give me the guy in this room outside of Marcelino who's staring you down. Give me the guy in the room who you would trust to make a penalty kick with the season on the line. Outside of Robbie Gold, let's say. Man, that was too easy. I was going to say. Uh, you said I can't, say, a, I can't yeah, say Mitch either? You can't say Mitch. You can't say Robbie because they kick. But just who's a pressure guy? Who's Definitely not Marcelino. <laughs> uh, <laughs> who's the pressure guy? <laughs> uh, I'll go with uh, Flan. I'll go with Flan. Demetrius Flan and Fouts. Demetrius Flanagan Fowles. Yes, sir. What, 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 what is about him that makes you think? I don't know. He just seems like a guy that can handle pressure real well. Really? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. Former Arizona safety yes, converted sir. to linebacker. Oh, yeah. Linebackers always got to rep other backers. Right. Curtis, thanks yep. for your time. Yeah, of course. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Yep. Have a good one. Good. Yep.